Um, okay, so as you have heard, uh, my name is Kasper, and today I would like to tell you about a library that we developed at uh, our team called Armadillo. But before we begin, I would like to say a big thanks to the organizers for organizing this amazing event and also for inviting me here. I also want to thank uh, Input Output, my company, uh, for sponsoring my trip here. And for those who don't know, we are a fully decentralized remote working organization and we do software development based on research papers. We are mostly known as uh, creators for, uh, of Cardano, which is a first proof of stake blockchain built using evidence-based methods. And we have established collaboration with recognized universities such as Edinburgh and Stanford. And we are also hiring. So if you are into Scala, Haskell, Agda, or TypeScript, wait no more and apply today. Okay. I was told that when presenting a solution for some problem, it's good habit to start from the problem statement. So here we go. One of the requirements for our project was to be compatible with Ethereum ecosystem and the tooling around it. And that means that we need to provide a JSON RPC API for our component. Um, later, because implementing JSON RPC uh, protocol is not really that hard, so once we have done it, we are also asked to provide a nice user-friendly documentation for it. Luckily, there is already a project for it. It's called OpenRPC, and it's something similar to what OpenAPI is for HTTP, but it's tailored to JSON RPC protocol. However, similarly to OpenAPI and Swagger, the specification for OpenRPC documentation needs to be provided as JSON or YAM. So, Next, we have this question, how do we make sure that um, the documentation of our API is up to date with what we have in our code? And who is going to write all that YAM in the first place, right? But before we go further into the solution, first I would like to give you a refresher course about JSON RPC protocol. So it was created in 2005 as a JSON-based alternative for XML RPC. And as you may probably know, RPC stands for Remote Procedural Call, which was a very popular communication pattern back then. Last revision 2.0 comes from 2013, and this is what we will be focusing on throughout the rest of the talk. Um, what's nice about it is that it is transport layer agnostic, meaning that we can use it over HTTP protocol, WebSocket, or anything else. Um, it's, nowadays, it's mainly used for inter-process communication. So, for example, language server protocol specifies that the client should communicate with the server using JSON RPC API. And the protocol is generally quite simple, However, there are a few caveats. So, throughout the couple of next slides, I will be using following convention, where first we'll have a request heading toward the server, and then a, a replay from the server. A basic JSON RPC request may look like this. I hope that I'm not, uh, no, inter, uh, okay. So, may look like this and it needs to adhere to a certain structure. So first, we have a version indicator, which for 2.0 version of the protocol has to be set to uh, 2.0. Then we have a method name of the RPC call, followed by the arguments for the method call, and then ca they can be passed either as a JSON array or a JSON object. And uh, then we have ID field, and I will cover it a little bit uh, later. 
When it comes to the response, it also needs to follow a well-defined structure. So we have, again, this version indicator, the ID field, and a result field that will carry the server uh, RPC call payload. Um, and in case of the error, instead we will have the error field. As I uh, have just said, we can pass the arguments for the RPC call uh, using a different encoding, uh, just by encoding them as a JSON object, where each argument is a property of this object. This is a little bit more verbose, but also less error prone, because you no longer have to rely on implicit arguments of the parameters in the array. And uh, they are called respectively uh, by position or by name, passing styles. Okay, um, JSON RPC uh, protocol also supports sending notification. A notification is a special kind of uh, JSON RPC request that server should not respond to. And every JSON RPC request can be turned into a notification by simply removing ID field. We can also call multiple RPC method at once during a single request by using so-called batch requests. And those uh, batch requests are, bas are basically a JSON array of JSON RPC requests. And in that case, in return, we'll also get a JSON array of JSON RPC responses. And here comes the importance of the ID field, because we may use it to match the responses with corresponding requests that we have sent, because they may actually be returned in a different order. We can also mix and notifications and regular requests within a single batch request, and in such case, in return, we will only get the uh, requests uh, that we send uh, not as notifications. Okay, so now, equipped with the understanding of JSON RPC protocol, we can proceed further and flesh out our goals. So, first of all, as we have already established, we want to have always up-to-date, automatically generated documentation. We also want to fully support JSON RPC 2.0 specification with all those batch requests, notifications, and whatnot. Um, we would like to express our endpoints as regular values because we think that that's idiomatic to functional Scala. And we also like this approach that Tapir took, for example. As we have already written our, like some of uh, the endpoints uh, using uh, previous initial approach, uh, we want to have ability to run our legacy endpoints side by side with the new endpoints to allow for incremental migration of our API. And we want to support multiple JSON libraries, so we won't be limited to using a single one, and in the future we may uh, be able to migrate to use some other JSON library. And the same story actually goes with HTTP servers. So if you are familiar with Tapir, you may think that it actually may fulfill many of those goals, and that is correct. Uh, so we uh, investigated Tapir as a possible solution. However, Tapir is deeply rooted into HTTP protocol. Like, Tapir is all about expressing HTTP endpoints, and JSON RPC is like a layer on top of it. The HTTP protocol is only a transport layer, and JSON RPC doesn't care at all about it. If we take a look at how JSON RPC requests that are being sent uh, using HTTP uh, can look like, 
we can see that uh, we need to have some uh, method for the HTTP call. So the convention is to use meth post method. Uh, we need to have some uh, path. And again, the convention is to just use the uh, root address. And uh, that's all. Then we have the JSON body, which uh, you don't really know what it uh, really represents until you decode this method name, which tells you which endpoint you are calling and how you should decode your uh, method uh, call parameters. So if you try to express this as a, as a Tapir endpoint, you will start with the basic and empty endpoint, then a method post, then we will have a JSON body that is this generic JSON RPC request, and as an output, we will have, again, a JSON body which is optional JSON RPC response, generic response, uh, because we may have notifications that uh, do not return anything. And even though this is like already so general that we cannot really derive any useful documentation from this type, it's not really general enough to express full um, JSON RPC protocol because it uh, won't handle, for example, batch requests, which are just uh, JSON arrays. And uh, yeah, this will be the type under the hood. So uh, you can actually read more about this uh, under the following issue. And because of that, we decided to roll out our own solution. However, even though we have not used Tapir directly, we took a lot of inspiration from Tapir. And throughout the rest of the talk, you will see a lot of similarities between these two libraries. First of all, because they solve a similar problem. And second, because we took the inspiration from Tapir because we liked how it approached it. We think that the approach is good. It results in great uh, developer experience. And it has been proven. Obviously, we could have written it in a different way by why change something that works so well. So if we take a look again at this JSON RPC basic request that I showed you before and try to define an endpoint using Armadillo, it will look somehow like this. First, we need to call the JSON RPC endpoint method and we need to provide the method name uh, argument. And uh, we need to do this because in contrary to HTTP and Tapir, there is no such thing as empty default endpoint. Every JSON RPC endpoint needs to have a method name. Then we can provide input parameters and we can concatenate multiple of them. Uh, we can also specify the result type. And this uh, will give us in return JSON RPC endpoint with following type signature. We can also attach server logic that will be parameterized by some effect type. Here I'm using ID monad just for simplicity. And notice that the result is wrapped in right either because the left side will be used for error channel. And this will give us JSON RPC server endpoint. And you may wonder why I actually specified input parameters in this way. Why not have a single param that has a type of tuple of ints? Well, because following encoding allows us to seamlessly support both ways of passing RPC method arguments. This endpoint will out of the box support uh, passing them as a JSON array, as well as a JSON object using the named style. We can also limit uh, our endpoint to only support a certain style of passing uh, parameters. 
Um, this endpoint will also handle notifications out of the box by simply not returning any response. Um, it will also, uh, we can also call this endpoint multiple times at once uh, within a single request using those batch requests. And from the perspective of the endpoint, it will be totally transparent. Right, so now once we know how we can encode our JSON RPC API with Armadillo. Let's see what else can we do with this Armadillo. So we can actually convert uh, endpoints written in Armadillo using Tapir interpreter into a single Tapir HTTP endpoint and combine it with the rest of the HTTP API expressed as Tapir and exposed through many of the supported Tapir HTTP servers, be it HTTP4S, ZHTTP, Netty, or anything else. And this is really cool because the, uh, the server endpoint that we obtain by this conversion is really a regular Tapir endpoint. No modifications were required into Tapir uh, to support it. No Tapir were harmed during this project. Um, and uh, under the hood, this endpoint will have following type signature uh, because it needs to be generic enough to support uh, all, the, all the JSON RPC protocol. Okay, what else can we do? Well, obviously, we can generate documentation because that was the whole point of doing this project, right? So we can use OpenRPC interpreter to obtain this OpenRPC specification, either as a JSON or YAML, and we can then feed it into OpenRPC Playground, which is something similar to a Swagger Life Editor that allows you to interactively expose, uh, explore your API uh, through a nice web interface. However, JSON RPC protocol is transport agnostic. So we can use FS2 interpreter and convert it into FS2 pipe. And this abstract pipe can be later attached to some socket. For example, Unix domain socket or a web socket. And in particular, this web socket can be a web socket, web socket written, in, written with Tapir endpoints. We can also customize Armadillo in multiple different ways using interceptors. And interceptors, uh, their design is based on Tapir's interceptors, which are, uh, because we found this design very powerful, flexible, and also elegant. So uh, we allow for customization uh, of Armadillo on three different layers. First of all, we have the request layer when you, can, when you will have a row JSON value which can be either JSON array or JSON object because it can be this batch request. Then we have a method layer when we already unwrapped the, the batch request so you will have only those singular JSON RPC requests. And last, we have the endpoint layer when we already found a matching JSON RPC endpoint and you can parse your arguments accordingly. So, interceptors are actually so powerful that in fact we use them to implement some of the Armadillo's internal mechanism. For example, error handling or batch request processing are implemented using interceptors. In our project, we used interceptors to create an adaptation layer between our new JSON RPC endpoints written using Armadillo and old legacy endpoints. And it looks somehow like this. Right. So you may actually wonder why we call this library Armadillo. And this is my fault. Because um, if all you know about animals is how they look 
in cartoons, then you may actually think that they are somehow similar, right? Maybe even related. Well, so actually, my, my girlfriend helped me realize that in reality, they are not really even close. So maybe it wasn't the best name uh, after all, but uh, yeah, I, I think we will stay to it. <laughs> um, okay, we still have uh, a little bit of time, so let me quickly show you uh, one of the most interesting uh, like things uh, that uh, I discovered after I actually implemented, well, after we implemented it. So, um, I hope that you can see it. Um, here we have a definition of JSON RPC uh, greeting endpoint that can accept name and output greeting. And we have this very simple uh, server logic which, uh, which returns hello name. And here I'm using this FS2 interpreter with a uh, circa JSON support. And I'm converting the endpoints into FS2 pipe. So this is an FS2 pipe. Then I'm specifying a Tapir WebSocket endpoint. And I'm saying that the WebSocket will be uh, handled, handled WebSocket messages frames will be handled by FS2 frames. And this is just a definition of an endpoint. So here I am attaching uh, to this endpoint server logic, which will actually invoke my FS2 pipe that I obtained from converting Armadillo. And this gives me uh, WebSocket roots. Uh, and those roots I can pass into Blaze Server bil Builder. Um, that uh, I re later uh, create and execute. And once I have created the backend, I can actually construct a very simple HTTP request. Um, and uh, um, process response as a WebSocket. And once I, once I have this WebSocket obtained, I can actually use it to send this handcrafted JSON RPC request. And hopefully, in return, we'll be able to uh, print the response. So let's see how it works. OK, there are many logs. But uh, yeah, here we have received response. And hello, John. Right. So I, I'm really happy how it turned out, because JSON RPC is really something on top of HTTP. And I'm happy that we were able to preserve this um, relation with Armadillo and Tapir, because Armadillo is something on top of Tapir, like a layer 2 solution. So that's actually all what I have prepared for you today. Here are the links for my presentation and how you can find me on Twitter. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer them.